Greetings, Brymont. This is my cheat sheet for Friday, July 20th. So-called green energy homes, green certified homes. These are the basically the Energy Star certified equivalent of homes. It's what you can do to make sure that you don't have a bunch of energy linking out of the home, that you have uh, AC units that are uh, at the peak of efficiency, various different things to become more energy efficient in your home. I have on the physical cheat sheet what a green certified home exactly would be. Uh, in our area, solar panels would take you a long way towards getting there. Anyway, uh, the survey and, and the study, this has only been conducted out west, so we don't have any uh, surveying from Florida just yet. But along the west coast, predominantly uh, California and Washington State, they ended up surveying uh, so far this year the difference in what a green certified home was selling for and renting for versus a traditional home that wasn't as energy efficient. And what we're seeing is almost what they call the Prius-like effect. This is that we're willing to pay a little bit more for a hybrid than we would even the stand standard model car because we do get more value on the ongoing cost basis, not having to spend as much on utility bills. The average green certified home that has been studied so far in 2012 is actually selling for 9% more. Now, you know, in housing, that's not peanuts. I mean, you're talking nine grand for $100,000 of value. So in our area, uh, that would mean that a green certified home at the average sales price at just under 200000 would end up saving uh, or making the average person about $15,000 more. So if you're thinking about making your home more energy efficient and hoping that one day if you sold it, you'd get that money back out of it, increasingly, it's looking like it might be a good value in the near term and the longer run. By the way, you get more rent for those energy efficient homes too, about 3% more rent money in what they have studied. President Obama, he is uh, in our general vicinity as I record this, and he's also at a six month low in his approval ratings, nearly the worst number so far in 2012. Rounding up this week, rounding up, it would go to 47% in his approval. He actually hit a low in the average of 46.4% uh, this week. And what that ends up computing, as we are within four months of Election Day, is it's a coin toss right now, an absolute coin toss. Historically, using this information, President Obama would have a 52% chance of winning re-election. One of the things we're going to start doing for you every Friday in this report as well is giving you uh, the most recent close election we had to go by, history as a guide. President Bush... George W. Bush, at this point in the 2004 uh, re-election cycle, had an approval rating of 48%. So he's one point better off than President Obama. And on election day itself, President Bush did get himself back to just under a 50% approval rating. So he was able to increase it, thus win re-election. Uh, watch, I'll watch that and report on that very closely, since it looks like we're set up for a very close election. By the way, uh, the overall electoral margin this week uh, still stands at 285 to 253 in favor of President Obama. Couple states to watch on that note. Uh, there are several in the toss up category, uh, but Virginia in, in particular, while it's still projected for President Obama in several different polls this week, Virginia either tied or President Obama less than a one point lead there uh, with a lot of undecided voters. Virginia and Michigan on their own are big enough states to swing. If that were to swing the other way to Romney, that would be enough to swing the current electoral margin and change the outcome of the election in these projections. So, anyway, uh, interesting, I figure. Good food for thought. Uh, and top investing tip. I got a lot of other, other stuff in my fiscal cheat sheet today, but the one I want to leave you with is something that's near and dear, and that is uh, in, uh, something you can do to make yourself a better investor. Behavioral expert ended up studying investing and those that are most successful. And the one trait that he identified, and actually wrote a book about this, uh, that can make you a better investor, it could probably be useful to you in life, is it's not about the outcome of any single investment. It's about your decision in making the investment in the first place. What he means by that is, let's say that you just bought something on a whim or because somebody told you to do so, and it ended up working out really well and you made a lot of money on it. If you replicated that formula time and again, more often than not, he found you'll come up on the losing end versus having a really sound decision as to why you made an investment in the first place. Even if you lost money the first time on that, if it's a sound philosophy and you institute it time after time, the odds are the outcome over the long term will work out to what you're trying to achieve. 
So it's process and decision making more than it is ever the outcome of any single investment you make that will determine just how successful you are. I have a lot more on that on my fiscal cheat sheet today. Look, enjoy your weekend. Hope you have a great one, and we will see you on Monday.